So communication speeds have taken huge strides. Just in my lifetime, we've gone from an equivalent of bullock carts to bullet trains. Um, so much so that last week, some companies actually slowed down their website, gave you the illusion. That means we're pretty quick by now, when our concern is slowing down and not speeding up. So how fast is fast? So let's take an example and time travel. Let's say you're driving down to Coney Island, you're stuck on the GW bridge, your friend is waiting for you, and you decide to tweet this message. What goes in the hot dog stays in the hot dog. <laughs> what are the factors that go into that tweet reaching the destination? First is the speed. At 40 megs per second, we have pretty much maxed out the speed for a message like that. What, what's the second factor? It's the connection time, the overhead. Companies like Twitter have made huge strides. They almost stream the data to you. That's not relevant as well. So it turns out the time it takes you to type that message into your phone is actually the most uh, time it takes. Couple that with a one second delay, mobile networks still have a latency. That's about 21 seconds to tweet that message. <clears throat> but tweeting is fairly new. Did you know that Martin Cooper, who worked for Motorola, made the first cell phone call from 53rd Street and 6th Avenue? right outside this building 40 years ago. So cell phones go a long time ago. Imagine you had to text using a dumb phone. You had to first navigate that ghastly keypad. It would take you 50 seconds to type that message on that keypad. It would take 51 seconds to text. What about if you just left a voicemail? You had to first get across that unnecessary apology followed by the unnecessary instructions on how to leave a voicemail. It would take you about 34 seconds. Text, email, these are forms of transmissions over long distance that no, don't require a physical object to be exchanged. That's all part of telegraphy. <clears throat> One form of telegraphy is semaphores, which rely on visual communication. Hilltop towers, smoke signals, Maritime flags, these are examples of semaphores. These didn't really take off in a big way, so I'm going to ignore them. An electrical telegraph sends messages using dots and dashes, and that's called a telegram. At 20 words per, per minute, a professional operator would take about 33 seconds to telegraph that message, what goes in the hot dog stays in the hot dog. <laughs> what about before telegraphy? You had to actually physically exchange the message. So it was a, it was a breaking period. My favorite example is the homing pigeon or the carrier pigeon. It was popular right from Genghis Khan to the World War II soldiers. At a blazing speed of 50 miles per hour, it would take 31 minutes for the message to go from GW Bridge to Coney Island. That's pretty fast. Obviously, the post office, the postal system, that's our most durable and long-lasting. That's the oldest post office in the world, in Scotland. But the innovators of the postal system were the Persians. They created a system of exchange stations over a high-speed road uh, where a bunch of messengers on horseback would carry messages from one end to the other. It would take about two and a half hours on the Persian Royal Post. We come to the single courier on foot, the most famous being Pheidippides, the guy who ran from Marathon all the way to Athens, which is the same distance as it is from GW to Coney Island. He gave the message, we have won, collapsed and died. I guess there won't be any retweets. <laughs> Speed is becoming a non-factor. In the end, the communicator will be confronted with the old problem of what to say and how to say it. Thank you. <laughs>